Hello, in today's React Native tutorial, we are looking at the problem where the keyboard on the mobile app covers the input field when you are typing, so you don't see exactly what you are typing. And this happens especially when you have a lot of input fields on the page. To handle this, we'll be creating a custom container component that can be used on all screens containing input fields to fix this behavior. For the demonstration, I'll be using this simple Expo app that I have over here. It contains a few text inputs, all being wrapped in a scroll view. Also at the bottom, we have some styling for the inputs and also the container. Now while preparing for this video, one thing I noticed was that when you wrap a set of text inputs in a scroll view, on Android, you get some form of keyboard avoidance. So on the Android app here, when I focus on the bottommost input, we see that it moves up out of the way of the keyboard. However, on iOS, this does not work like that. So on iOS, when I select the input, the keyboard covers the input and you will not see whatever you are typing. So the goal we have here is that by the end of the video, we will achieve a similar behavior on both iOS and Android. Now to start this, let's create a directory for our components. And in this directory, we'll create our components. We'll call this component keyboard avoiding container. Now in this file, we'll first set up a basic function component. So here we just make use of the arrow function. And then for the start, we can just return a fragment. Like so. And then at the bottom, we can export as the default of the file. Keyboard avoiding container. Yes. And since this will be a container that is a wrapper for the content of the screen, we want to take in the children property and pass it here. So we destructure children from the properties and then we can return it in the fragment. Yeah, just like so. With this done, we go back to the app file and then we can import our new component. So we import the keyboard avoiding container. Wow, I can't type. Like so. And then we want to strip the whole component of the scroll view and replace with the keyboard avoiding container. So we can select the scroll view here and hit Ctrl D to select the closing tab. Then we can type keyboard avoiding container. Yeah, like so. Now for this, we don't need a style, so we can get rid of the style here. With this done, we can see that the layout is messed up. This is what we want so that we can fix the issue from scratch. Next, we head back to our container. And then over here, we want to import the safe area view from React Native. So we import safe area view from React Native, not the types. And the safe area view will be the first component that we return. So we can replace the fragment here with the safe area view. Now one thing about the safe area view is that on iOS, it helps to avoid the status bar and the notches. However, on Android, it does nothing. So as you can see, the content is still in the status bar. But on the iOS, we can see that the content is out of the status bar. So for instance, if I just undo this and we have no more the safe area view, we see that the content on the iOS just enters back into the status bar. And when we redo this, it just drops out of the status bar. Now for the safe area view, we'll style it a bit. Here, we'll give it a flex property of one. And then we can give it a default background color. So let's say F9, FA, FB. Yeah, like so. We will talk more about the background color in a bit. Next on the list is the keyboard avoiding view. So for that as well, we import it from React Native. 
yes and this will be the next component inside the safe area view so cut the children property here and paste it between the keyboard avoiding view For this component as well, we'll style it with a flex property of 1. In addition to the style, we'll pass a behavior property. Now this property will determine how the keyboard manages to avoid the inputs on our page and this property will be different for both iOS and Android. So we need to determine the particular platform we are on to pass the appropriate value. So for this, we import the platform API from React Native. So once you have that, we can get rid of the string here and make the check. So we check for the platform.os. Here we first check if the value is iOS. So if that's the case, we return the pardon value. Otherwise, if we are on Android, we use the height instead. Yeah, just like so. We'll come back to this in a bit to pass an additional property. The next component we need here is the scroll view. So we import that from React Native as well. And once again, we'll wrap the children with the scroll view. So we cut the children and paste it in between the scroll view. With this done, we can see that our content can now scroll. However, there is a scroll bar here that we can hide it to make our work cleaner. So for that, we'll pass the property shows vertical scroll indicator. Yeah, so shows vertical scroll indicator. And we'll set the value here to false. Now when we start scrolling, we shouldn't see anything at the side. Now the scroll view here will be our innermost component, meaning that to be the closest to our children property. So this is where we will apply the styles for our content. So for this, I will bring in the style sheet from React Native. And then we can create a simple style sheet. We will call our style content container. And we'll start with a pattern of 20. Now back to the scroll view, we'll apply the styling through the content container style. Yeah, just like so. And we should see some pattern around our content. Now if you have a look at the content on the page, it is still entering the status bar. That means that we need some more padding at the top. However, on iOS, we don't have this issue because of the safe area view. So meaning to achieve a consistent look on both iOS and Android, we need to know the actual height of the status bar. So to do this, we import the status bar from React Native. So import status bar from React Native. And then in the style, we set a value for padding top. Now, since we need the actual status bar height for only Android, we want to check the platform that we are on. So once again, we call platform.os. And this time around, we check if we are on Android. So if that's the case, we call status bar. And then we target the current height property. Once we are done like so, we add the actual pattern that we want at the top of our work. So let's see if we want 50, we add 50 here. And in the alternate case, that is if we are on iOS, we set the value to just the pattern that we want. So that will be 50 as well. Now this guy is dead, so I need to refresh it. And sorry, this should be a comma. Once it's done refreshing, we can now see that our content is now out of the status bar. 
and even if we change our actual pattern to zero we can see that it moves up but it never enters the status bar so meaning we've solved the issue now if the keyboard avoiding container is used elsewhere and additional styles are passed the styles should be received by the inner mode scroll view here so for that we want to destructure the style from the properties and then we convert the content container style here to an array. Once we've done that, we can add a style here. An exception to this will be the background color of the component. For the background color, we only want to pass it to the safe area view here. That is because it is the only way we can achieve a consistent background color. For instance, if I change the background color here to red, We can see that the whole page is covered. However, if I go back to the apps file and then I take off some of the input fields. If I take away some of the content like so, we see that now we have two colors on the page, meaning that the innermost component, which is the scroll view, is unable to cover the whole screen. However, we still see the color of the outermost component, which was the safe area view. So this wouldn't work. So we can undo this to bring our content back. So back here, we get rid of the background color here. And then since we will not be passing the background color through the style here, we want to accept the background color as a standalone property. So in addition to the style here, we want to accept a background color property. Once we have that, we will pass this to the background color of the safe area view. So we'll pass it here as background color and then we'll fall back to our static color here if we don't receive anything for the background color. So meaning if you pass a background color, we'll make use of it. Otherwise, we'll make use of our default color here. At this point, the keyboard should avoid our inputs totally fine on both iOS and Android. So on both iOS and Android, when I select the bottommost input, it should move out of the way of the keyboard. And whenever I click outside, the keyboard should be dismissed. This should be the same for iOS as well. Selecting the inputs, it moves up out of the way of the keyboard. And then clicking or pressing outside, the keyboard is dismissed. However, there are two more important things to talk about. The first thing is a property known as the keyboard vertical offset. And this is a property to the keyboard avoiding view.